This is Liz, and she's 18 years old, female, and she first was limping on her front leg, and then now she's not doing, she's not being able to use her back legs at all. Um, but um, with this sudden lameness and it moving from the front to the back is very suggestive of um, you know, saddle thrombus. Um, or in a, it's called an aortic thromboembolism, or ATE. So what happens is, uh, w in order to form this clot, the heart is affected and has thickened walls, and I'll show you that in a minute, forms a clot, and the clot goes all the way through the aorta and wedges around the iliac arteries, and those iliac arteries go to the back legs. So the muscles will cramp up, the legs will feel cool, and the cat will be very painful, and it actually pant. Some of them will pant, and it act in a lot of distress. Well, why does this happen? It's because uh, genetically some cats have a defective uh, area in the genes that allow the muscle to thicken. If you look at the two hearts in the illustration, one's got thin walls around the ventricles and the atrium, and one's got a very thick wall. That thick wall is uh, causes the left atrium not to really function very well, can't empty well, and blood clots will form up in that thickened atrium. In fact, it, these are uh, diagrams and then we can see the actual thickened muscle of a cat that died of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And you can see in the, on, the, on the anatomical specimen there, you can see a very thickened wall. It's like a stake. Well, the heart is a muscle, right? And it's a big thickened muscle that uh, doesn't allow the heart to pump right or work right, and then they can throw these clots. So, how do you diagnose something like this? Well, you know, sometimes the, one of the biggest signs is it's very painful and the muscles cramp up. So, um, first of all, you might feel a coolness in the leg, and then there won't be a pulse um, in the hind leg. Uh, like there should be, and I don't feel much of a pulse. Um, and if I press on the, 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 the muscles right here, they're, they're somewhat painful, but I don't want to do too much because Liz already told me they're pretty painful. So, it's, and it's happening in both legs. Both legs are cooler than the front. I know it does hurt, huh? So we're going to try something um, I read on my veterinary internet site. We we're going to uh, cut the nails to the quick a little bit and we're going to see if what the blood flow is like. You can see that the blood is kind of dark and it's not coming out that much for um, so back in the quick. So that's, that's, that's a, the way that um, they said we could diagnose it also. So the coolness of the limbs, the pain, the pain in the muscles, and a lot of cats are very painful. They're panting and 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 can't get comfortable. And with Liz, the the thrombus might not be completely blocking the hind limbs, but there is some blood flow. So the treatment. So after all this, the the treatment is to get uh, put some anti clotting agents. Aspirin used to be one of the anti clotting agents, but now it's not. I go to a drug anymore that Plavix is, and um, we're going to look into that and see what we can do for Liz. So here's Liz's chest x-ray, and you can, for those of you that aren't used to x-rays, this is the thorax, this is the trachea, and usually the trachea will come down in this angle if the cat's got a normal size heart. This trachea is elevated quite a bit, um, which I suppose which I suspect the heart's very large. The heart, if it's very large, it doesn't completely compress and it can throw a blood clot that goes down the artery and hangs up right at where the artery splits into the iliac arteries that go to the legs. That's why Liz's legs were cooler and why they didn't bleed very much. So I gave Liz some furosemide to take some fluid out of the heart um, and also some diltiazem for the heart rate to get it down, um, and then an aspirin for tonight, and then tomorrow we're going to start on a Plavix. 
So also I'll show you the um, x-ray of the, the chest. And this is a weird shot. It shows some fluid on this side and not as much of this side. So that's a very odd thing. There could even be a tumor here or something. So we don't know exactly what's wrong, but we were trying some drugs based on the clinical impressions tonight, and then we might refine them tomorrow and see what happens. So this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy happens mostly in purebred cats. There's a specific mutation that's been isolated in Maine Coons and Ragdoll cats. And also can occur in Persians and Himalayans, but like I said, more and also American short hair cats. It's a it's something that's happened in our breeding to make purebred cats that make their heart muscle get wacky. And so I always think, you know what, cats are uh, carnivores. Why don't we give them a little bit more meat? So if you have a cat, it's always good to feed them uh, a little bit of cooked or raw meat um, every week, just to just to really get that protein up. So they have plenty of protein in case something's going on in their system that they need a little bit more of that natural substance that they evolved to eat. Anyway, so much for that, but uh, this uh, um, cardiomyopathy can happen uh, in a purebred cat, usually at a young age, um, because this kitty um, had it at 18 years of age, and in the x-ray we saw that one side of the lungs were cloudier than the other. It's probably more to do uh, with a tumor than actually having hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And I talked about how do you diagnose it, and the best way to diagnose it is with an ultrasound, a, uh, echocardiogram. Um, but that night and with her age and everything, um, and I can do ultrasounds of the abdomen, but not as comfortable with the heart. However, this one might have been easier, but... Uh, I could pretty much can tell in an 18-year-old cat that something was really wrong, so we treated her the best we could and, uh, with the drugs we would use uh, for um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or in the saddle thrombus. And if it was a tumor, of course, that wouldn't work. And true enough, uh, the next day uh, the cat was no better, and then the following day uh, still no better. So. Uh, the owner decided to not put it through any more suffering and to put it to sleep. Well, I feel sorry for the cat, but at least um, she was 18 years old and had a great life, uh, Liz did, and um, that's all we can all hope for is um, to live a full life and then at the end not suffer, and we didn't want Liz to suffer. Check out Dog Dish Diet if you want to learn more about how to feed your dogs uh, a better diet and also to home cook for your cats. Um, you can um, try to home cook with meat and rice or meat and vegetables and your cat will get a little bit more protein and give it a little change up. As you know, a lot of cats don't like what we get for them or cook for them anyway, but it's worth a try. Have a great day.